Good day, grade 10s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope that you've had a good break and that you are ready to get going and to learn some more about Euclidean geometry. So I don't know if you recall, but in the last lessons, what we were doing was we were going through various quadrilaterals and we were looking at their properties and then we we're using proofs to solve their properties, I mean, to prove the properties. And then also what we're doing is using those properties to solve um, Euclidean geometry questions. So we've moved on to, we've done parallelograms and now we are going to look at rectangles. So a rectangle is a parallelogram that has four equal angles that are equal, all four angles are equal to 90 degrees, okay? So it's a rectangle is a parallelogram, but it's got all four angles equal to 90 degrees. So let's talk about the properties of a rectangle. So far we know, because it is the same as a parallelogram, we know that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. We also know that both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, it's the same as a parallelogram. However, we know that both pairs of opposite angles are equal, that's the same as a parallelogram, but yeah, all angles are equal to 90 degrees, that's new. The stuff in red is new. Both diagonals bisect each other, that we knew from parallelograms, but now they're equal in length, that's new, that's for diagonals. Okay, that's just for rectangles. So now what we are going to do is we're going to use congruency to prove that the diagonals are equal in length. So we're going to look at triangle ADC, triangle ADC, A, D, C, and we're going to look at triangle B, C, D. Okay, and we're going to prove that these two triangles are congruent, okay? And if we can do that, then do you agree that we know for a fact that if that's the case, then we'll know that AC is equal to BD, and then we will know the diagonals in a rectangle are equal in length. Okay, so do you agree that we have definitely got that AD is equal in length to BC. Okay, how do I know that? I know that because BC, why? Because I know that opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal in length, and this, since this is a special parallelogram, it's a rectangle, these must also be equal in length. So it's opposite sides of a parallelogram, I'm going to call it a palm, are equal. There you go. We also know, which is pretty obvious, that DC is equal to DC. Why? Because it's common. Okay, so that line there is common. And we also know that these two triangles, that these two angles, ADC, angle ADC plus angle BCD, BCD, okay, must equal 180 degrees. Why? Because they are co-interior angles. They are co-interior angles. Does that help us prove the things congruent? So far we've got that this side is equal to this side and we've got that this is common. Um, oh no, there's a better way. Sorry, let me rather rephrase because I'm probably going to have to use that to prove that things are 90 degrees. So let's rather look at angle this angle, yeah, angle DAC. Angle DAC is going to be equal to DAC, is going to be equal to C, hang on, DAC is going to be equal to BC, sorry, hang on a minute. This angle is equal to that angle. Does it help? No, it doesn't. Um, and, and a second, because they're alternate. And that angle 
is equal to that angle because they're alternate. Um, okay, sorry. I'm being silly. Let me just correct myself. I'm thinking that because we're trying to prove the diagonals are equal, that we can't use the fact that the angles are 90 degrees, but we can actually use the fact that the angles are 90 degrees. So we know that this angle here, ADC, angle ADC, is equal to BCD, which equals 90 degrees. Why? Because it's a property of a rectangle. Therefore, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BCD. Therefore, we can say that AC is equal to BD. Therefore, the and the reason for this, by the way, is um, side mm, side angle side or side angle side, whichever you've learned. Therefore, the reason for this is therefore BD okay, and therefore the diagonals are equal in length. Sorry. Okay, I was being silly. Sorry, guys. Okay, let's move on. Now let's talk about a rhombus. A rhombus is interesting because a rhombus is a parallelogram with all four equal sides. All four sides are equal in length, okay? So what does that mean? That means that it still has the properties of a parallelogram. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, okay? Both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Okay, we also know that both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, okay? So this is equal to this and this is equal to this. But what's special, hang on, okay, and both pairs of opposite angles are equal, as we know. So this is equal to this and that is equal to that. The diagonals bisect each other. We knew that already, but now they bisect each other perpendicularly. So that's new for rhombus. Okay, and the diagonals bisect the angles at the ends, so that's new for a rhombus. And what you should have also realized is that it says both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length. In fact, all four sides are equal. Okay, so let's just go through those last two again. The diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly and the diagonals bisect the angles at their ends, okay? So now we want to prove the diagonals bisect perpendicularly. So let's do that. First of all, what we need to do is we've got a, our, a rhombus. We know that we've got A, B, C, and D. We're going to draw There we go. Okay, so now what do we have? And we've got A, B, C, D, and we're going to join it in the middle at O. Okay, we want to prove the diagonals bisect perpendicularly. So do you agree that ideally, if we could prove that this triangle is congruent to that triangle? In other words, if we could say in a triangle, I don't know, A, O, B, A, O, B, and triangle, AOD, AOD. Do you agree that OB, I mean AB is equal to AD? Okay, so AB is equal to AD because it's given, because it's the sides of a rhombus are all equal. We also know that AO, AO is equal to AO. Why? Because it's common common. Okay, so what do we know so far? We know that this line here is equal to this line here, right? We also know that this line is common. Okay, and now we need to think about angles, okay? We've got, we're looking at triangle AOB, 
and we're looking at triangle AOD. So let's go back to what we know about the properties, okay? The, it says both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, both pairs of opposite angles are equal, and it says both diagonals bisect each other and the diagonals bisect the angles at the ends. So if we're proving the diagonals bisect perpendicular, we, but we know the diagonals bisect the angles at the ends. So therefore we know that this angle is equal to that angle. So therefore we can say in triangle, um, this one, A, A or B, we can say angle B, A, O, angle B, A, O, is equal to angle D A O D A O Y because the diagonals bisect the angles at their ends. Okay. Therefore, triangle A O B is congruent to triangle A. O D. Okay. Therefore, we can say that this length here, O B, must equal O D. Okay. And we can say that angle A O D or A O B, A O B, has to equal A O D, A O D which equals 90 degrees Y because AOB and AOD are supplementary. They're found on the same straight line. So therefore we know that this is equal to this and therefore, and that's 90 degrees. And you can do exactly the same thing with either of these two triangles. You can either do it with AOB and BOD or you can do it with A, O, D, and D, O, C, or even these two triangles, and then prove, no, you'd have to do it with these two, to prove that that is equal to that, and then you have that the diagonals bisect each other as well. Okay, so there you go. Not too bad, hey? Now, they want us to prove the diagonals bisect the angles at the ends. So last time we could use the fact that the diagonals bisect the angles at the ends. Now we can't use this. Okay, so again, what have we got? We've got A, B, C and D, we can join the dots, so it becomes BD and AC. And what do we want to prove? We want to prove that the diagonals bisect the angles at the end. So we want to prove that this angle is equal to that angle, for example. And we want to prove that that angle is equal to that angle, for example. Okay, so do you agree we could look at triangle, what have we got with this is equal to? Yeah, let's do triangle ADC. In triangle ADC, ADC and triangle ABC, ABC. Do you agree that AD is equal to AB? AD is equal to AB. Why? Because it's given. We also know that DC is equal to um, DC is equal to BC. That DC is equal to BC. Why? given and we have that AC is equal to AC. Why? Because it's common. Therefore, triangle ADC, that's a triangle, is congruent to triangle ABC. Okay. Therefore, we can say that angle DAC, DAC, is equal to triangle to angle BAC, BAC, and similarly, angle ACD. Sorry, this was side 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 here. Okay? Similarly, ACD is equal to AC ACB. Therefore. Diagonals bisect angle at end. Okay, there we go. 
quite nice there. Right, now we're going to do a problem that is an exam paper question problem based on what we have learned so far. Okay, so what does it say? It says in the diagram A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D is a rhombus. Okay, so we know that that is equal to this, it's equal to this, and this equal to this. And we know that that's 90 degrees. Okay, and that is equal to this, and that's equal to that, and we'll worry about the rest later. Okay, now it says, in the diagram, ABC is rhombus with having diagonals A, C, and B, D intersecting at O. Angle A, D, O is 36.87, so that there is 36.8C, and, and D, O is 8. Okay, now it says, write down the size of the following angles. C, D, O. Okay, C, D, O. Okay, well, it's pretty obvious that if this is 36.87, then this angle CDO is also going to be 36,87 degrees because the diagonals bisect the angles at the end. So, therefore, we know that this is equal to 36,87 degrees. Now, they want AOD. Okay, well, that's pretty easy as well. That's 90 degrees. I've already filled in because the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Now it says calculate the length of AO. So they want the length of AO. So do you agree you've got a Pythagoras situation here? Yeah, it is a 90 degree triangle. There, there's a triangle. Yeah, it's a 90 degree triangle. This is 90 degrees, obviously. That is 36.87 and that is 8. So do you agree that if we use a 36.87 degree angle, this is the opposite side. This is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent. And they want AO, so they want the opposite side. So we're going to use Sarkatoa. We've got the, oopsie, sorry, we've got the adjacent side. We've got, want the opposite side. So we're going to use tan. So we're going to say tan of 36,87 degrees is equal to the opposite side, which is what we want, over the adjacent side, which is 8. Therefore, we've got 8 tan 36,87 degrees is equal to the opposite side. Okay, so let's work that out, shall we? Let's work that out. So let's get out our calculator. Unfortunately, my calculator on screen is not working, so I'm just going to go 8. Where is it? 8 tan 36.87 close brackets equals and that is 6. That is 6. So the opposite side which is AO equals 6 units. That is equal to 6. Okay and 6.000022 so basically it's equal to 6. Do you agree? Now it says, if E is a point on AB such that OE is parallel to DA, calculate the length of OE. Okay, wait, let me just draw this now. What are they saying? They're saying, if E is a point on AB, AB, so that OE, OE is parallel to DA. Okay, so in other words, there's a line here. Okay, let me just... Okay, let's just erase. Okay, let me just think. What was six? Okay, erase link. So they're saying, okay, we know that the AO is six, hey? So they're saying, if there was a line, if E is a point on AB, such that OE is parallel to DA, calculate the length of OE. Okay. Well, that should be fairly doable, actually. Because this uses a combination of the fact that we know what rhombuses do and the midpoint theorem. Do you remember the midpoint theorem? We've discussed it before. Um, let me show you. Okay, so do you agree that if OE is parallel to DA, okay, then if we're looking in this triangle here, we can see that OE is parallel to DA and therefore it's going to be half its length. So if we use our Pythagoras and we've got 6 and 8, we can find the length of AD. We could also use trig. doesn't matter if you want to use trig, that's trig's fine. 
but I'm going to use Pythagoras and I'm going to find, actually, you know what, I'm going to use trig. Just now my six was wrong, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use trig to find that side. And then this, because it's joining the midpoint of AB, EB, well, it's joining the midpoint of this side, DA, and it's parallel to AD, so therefore E must be the midpoint of AB, and it's going to be half the length of AD. Okay, so what we're going to do now is find this side here, which I'm calling X, okay, AD. So what we're going to do is we're going to use trig again, and we're going to use it in the triangle AOD again. Okay, but this time we're trying to find out the length of AD. So we've got this is 8 and we've got this is 36.87. The reason I'm loath to use a 6 is in case I've messed up, in case I made a silly mistake with that. Okay, so we got Sakadua. Okay, this here is, we look using this angle, so this is the adjacent side. We want the hypotenuse, so we're using cos. So we're going to say cos of 36,87 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is 8, over the hypotenuse, which I'm calling x. Therefore, x is going to be 8 divided by cos of 36,87. Okay, so what do we have? We've got 8 divided by cos of 36,87 close bracket, equals 10. So therefore, the length of this is 10, okay? So therefore, EO has to be half that length. So therefore, EO, so this is equal to 10, so EO must equal 5, because this will be half the length. Right, excellent. Now let's move on to the square. So the square is special because basically it's got the same characteristics of a rhombus except for the fact that its angles are all 90 degrees. Okay, so the square is a rectangle with all four sides equal in length. That's another way of looking at it, okay? Or a square is a rhombus with all four interior angles equal to 90 degrees. So the properties of the square, obviously both sides or opposite sides are parallel. Both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length. Both pairs of opposite angles are equal. Okay, that's important. Okay, both diagonals bisect each other perpendicularly. And the diagonals bisect the angles at their ends. All interior angles equal 90 degrees. All interior angles equal 90 degrees. And the diagonals are equal in length as well. The diagonals are equal in length. Right. Notice that there's no proof that you have to do there for no strictly no proving. Let's talk about a kite. Now, a kite's quite an interesting one, okay, because it is slightly different from all the others. I mean, if you think about it, let's just go back for a second. You had a parallelogram, okay, and you knew what the properties of the parallelogram were, right? Um, and then what they did was they take the parallelogram and they squished it. So when they squished it, they turned it into a rhombus. Okay, so that's a rhombus. Or they took it and they straightened it up. Okay, and they called it a rectangle. Okay, they called it a rectangle. Or they took the rhombus and straightened it up and it became the square. Okay, do you understand? So all of those are kind of have the same shape. They've just had one little tweak to them or two little tweaks to them. Whereas a kite, if you look at it, is totally different. It's actually made up of two equilateral triangles placed on top of each other. Here's the one and there's the other, okay? Or, well, you can look at two identical triangles that aren't equilateral. Yeah, from ACB to ADB, okay? Now let's talk about the properties of kite. The diagonal between the between the equal sides bisects the other diagonal. In other words, this angle is equal to that angle. I mean, that, that diagonal half is equal to that diagonal half. Okay, so the diagonal which lies between the equal sides 
and you can see that this is the equal side a c b obviously if i took um i cut this out and i fold this over each other a c b would lie on a d b okay so they were equal sides and they would lie on each other and therefore it says the diagonal between the equal sides bisect the other diagonal one pair of opposite sides are equal and that would be these two they would be equal diagonals between equal sides bisect the interior angles and the axis of symmetry so the diagonals between the equal sides bisect the interior angles okay makes sense and is the axis symmetry we've also kind of mentioned that because we're saying that they fold along each other the diagonals intersect at 90 degrees okay and now what they want us to prove they want us to prove that triangle abd a b d is congruent should be another line there eh? is congruent to triangle a b c oh this is that the angles are equal sorry my bad hang on a minute let me see where is that then what happened there we go and we have to prove that triangle i'm sorry what was that doing prove that a b d is equal to a b c so a b c those two triangles there are obviously congruent Okay, so it says in the triangle ABD and triangle ABC. Okay, what do we know? We already know that um, AD is equal to AC. Why? Because it's given. We also know that DB is equal to BC given we also know that a b is equal to a b um because it's common therefore triangle a b d is congruent to triangle a b c okay and why would that be it would be side 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 so this is side 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 so therefore we can say the triangle a b d is congruent to triangle ABC. But what does that help us? They wanted us to prove that triangle that angle ADB, ADB, that angle there, is equal to ACB. Well, if these two triangles are congruent, then obviously this angle, therefore angle ABC, taking the same order, has to equal angle ABD. Okay. And the diagonals per set angle A and angle B. So now we need to prove that this well, if these two triangles are congruent, then this angle has to equal that angle. Um, and therefore, it only goes to show that AB bisect angle A. Right, okay, let's move on. Now they want us to prove the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Okay, so they want us to prove the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. So we're going to call the middle point O. Okay, let's call the middle point O. And what we're going to do is prove that tri that yeah, triangle ACO is congruent to triangle ADO. Because if those two triangles are congruent, then these two angles are equal and these two sides are equal. Therefore, we can say that the diagonals don't bisect at 90 degrees. Well, rest, one of them is bisected. CO is equal to OD. Okay, but o, AO does not equal OB. But, the, but they are at 90 degrees. So we go in triangle ACO and triangle ADO. Do you agree that AC is equal to AD? AC is equal to AD and why? It is given. Okay, we also know that AO is common. AO is common. All right, so now let me just highlight what we've got so far. And I mean it with a highlight. What we got? We got AC is equal to AD. We know that AO is common. Okay, 
What else do we know? We also know that this is in triangle ACO and triangle ADO. Okay, do you agree that angle A, well, it's not really going to help us, is it? Um, we've got this side and we've got that side. Mm. But we've just proven that the angles bisected by AB are equal in length. Okay, I need to put it into a pen. That's what I need to do. Okay, therefore we can say that angle CAO is equal to angle DAO. And all we have to say is proved above. Okay, therefore triangle ACO is congruent to triangle ADO. Okay, great. So we've proven that. Now we can say, but, but that means that angle AOC is equal to angle AOD, but that means that these are supplementary angles. Therefore, AOC has to equal AOD which equals 90 degrees. So there you go. So we've just proven the diagonals bisect at 90 degrees. Okay. Now we've got PQRS as a kite. Such the diagonals intersect at O. Okay, so because it's a kite, we know that these is 90 degrees. Do you agree? We know that this is 90 degrees. We also know that this is equal to that. Okay, and we know that that's 20 degrees as well. Okay, um, it says write down the length of OQ. Okay, well, we've already shown that we know that OS is equal to OQ. So therefore, that is equal to 2 centimeters. Write down the size of angle POQ. POQ, well, we've already shown that we know the diagonal is bisected 90 degrees. So angle POQ is equal to 90 degrees. And it says write down the size of QPS. QPS, QPS are a slight trick because we've just shown that we know that QPO equals 20 degrees. Because why? Because the diagonal is bisected the angles at the ends. So therefore, can you see that QP? S is going to obviously be what? QPS is obviously going to be um, 40 degrees because it's going to be 20 plus 20, which is 40 degrees. So QPS is 40 degrees. Where's my pen gone? Equals 40 degrees. There we go. Okay, moving on. Ah, another nice question. It says PQRS is a kite. Okay, so immediately I know, what do I know? I know that the whole of QR has to equal the whole of SR and the whole of PQ has to equal the whole of PS. Okay, that's what we know. It says A and B are midpoints of PQ and PS. Okay, so that means that that is equal to that and that is equal to that and they're actually equal because of the fact that this is like remember the rule that if this is a kite these two sides are equal and these two sides are equal right it says qd equals dr qd is equal to dr okay and SC is equal to CR. And again, we know that those two are equal for the simple reason that that line there is equal to that. It says let AB equal X. Okay, that's supposed to be an X. Prove that ABCD, ABCD is a parallelogram. They want us to prove that ABCD is a parallelogram. Okay, well, we can do that. That's quite a nice question, actually. How is that a nice question? Well, if you think about it, um, what we are saying is that since, okay, let me show you this. Okay, 
Um, I need to give you a little bit of a color going out. If we look at triangle PQS, okay, do you agree that that there is a triangle that has got AB is joining the midpoints of QS and therefore AB is going to be parallel to QS. Okay, so we can say in triangle PQS, PQS, AB is going to be parallel to QS. Why? And it's called the midpoint theorem. Okay, now if we look at the bottom one, do you agree you've got triangle QRS? And again, we know that DC in triangle QRS, QRS, we know that DC is going to be parallel to QS. Why again, the midpoint theorem. Okay, therefore, sorry, it's supposed to say DC. DC has to be parallel to AB, okay, because QS is common. Okay, therefore, this is parallel to, this is parallel to this. Okay, now we also know that in the triangle, the top triangle, okay, if, let me go back to red, back to red, if AB equals X, then do you agree that QS has to equal 2X? Again, because the midpoint theorem, because the line joining the two midpoints of the triangle has to be parallel to the third side and is half the length, exactly half the length, right? Then if we look at the green triangle, the green triangle, same thing, we can say if, and we know therefore that, hang on, as, okay, we know that DQS, QS is equal to 2X, right? Because we've proven it from above, right? Therefore, DC is equal to X. Okay, that's equal to X. And again, the reason there's the midpoint theorem. Okay, therefore, we can say that AB is equal to CD, which equals X. Okay, so we've just proven that that is equal to that. Okay. Um, right. So now we've got that this line is equal to this line. Okay. And we've proven that they are parallel. Therefore, we've got one pair of opposite sides parallel and equal. Therefore, ABCD is a parallelogram, parallelogram. There we go. Nice, eh? Hey? Okay, that's it for today. Please join me on Wednesday and we'll carry on ooh, with some more exam examples of quadrilaterals. Have a great day.